Hey everyone, in one of our earlier lessons we saw how we can make use of the split function to work with CSV files. But Python comes with many modules and packages that can come in handy whenever you want to solve any problem. If you want to work with CSV files in easier manner, Python comes with CSV module for that. As discussed earlier, module is just Python code written by some other developer which exports some functionalities and you just have to import and use them. In this video, we are going to explore how we can read and write from CSV files in a simpler way. Here I have got this very simple CSV file. If you don't know what CSV files are, then these are very simple text files in which we can organize data in the form of tables just like we do with excel sheets. Each record is on its own line and each column is separated from each other by some delimiter. In this case, the delimiter is comma character. That's why these files are called comma separated values or CSV files. There can be any other delimiter but comma is the most preferred one. The first line usually includes the heading of each data, what each column represents. In this sample CSV file, I have first name, last name, email address and person's age. After the first row, I have different person's data in each line. To work with CSV files, Python provides built-in CSV module. We can work with this module by first importing it using import csv. First of all, let's see how we can read this file. For that, I need to open the file just like we do with any other file. I can use the context manager using with open data.csv in read mode and this is the default mode so I can even omit this one as csv file. This opens up a context block with file handle as csv file. Now I can write csv.reader and pass csv file as argument. Here we are using the reader function from the csv module we imported at the top. It also has optional keyword argument for delimiter which has the default value of comma. So here I don't need to explicitly specify that. This returns a csv reader object. So let's assign it to csv underscore reader. You can name this variable whatever you want. Now I can iterate through this reader object and it will return each line as a list. Let's see this in action. For row in CSV reader, let's first print each row using print row. If I run this code, you can see that it has each field as a separate element of the list. It starts with the heading and loops through all the lines. If I want only first name and email address, I can print only index 0 and index 2. And if I run this code again, you can see that it prints only the first name and email address from the file. This looks fine, but what do you do if you want to skip the header line? For that, inside this context, we can skip the first line using next function and we can pass csv reader object inside that function. If I rerun this code, you can see that it now no longer has the header line from the csv file. Now let's see how we can write simple csv files. I'm going to use the data from this file and create another file with this data, but you could use data from other objects as well. To write a file, I will simply have to open another file for writing inside this first with block. 
let's write data2.csv file in write mode as new data file. Now we are inside this another context with block and we have access to both file handles here. Just like I created the reader object, I can use the writer function and pass the new data file variable we created here. That will return us the CSV writer object. In this case, I want to write a file that is semicolon delimited. So I can specify that using another keyword argument delimiter and assign the value of semicolon. I also want to write the header line. So let's remove this next function call so that we don't skip the first header line. Here in this for expression, I'm iterating over our original file and we get each row in this local row variable. Let's comment out this print statement. Now to write that row, I can use CSV writer dot write row method and pass this as argument to this method. And that's it. If I run this code, you can see that it runs successfully and we have this new file data2.csv. If I open that file, you can see that it has got the same data delimited by semicolon. Here you see that there is one extra line between each record row. To eliminate that, we can pass additional argument when we open our new data file. We can pass new line argument as empty string. It has the default value of new line character and that's why it prints new line character after each row we write. If I rerun this code, you can see that now it results in very similar file to our original file. Now let's see what happens if I use a delimiter that's already used in the data file. Here I update this delimiter as at symbol. Notice that our email address in original data.csv file has this symbol. If I run this code, you can see that it creates this file with each column delimited by this symbol. Also, because our emails were containing this symbol, you can see that it has been wrapped inside the double quotes automatically. So that's considered as a complete single field. That's the benefit of using CSV module for these operations. We don't have to take care of managing how we can separate data from our delimiter. Also, as you can see, there were very few changes I had to do to write a file. CSV module gives consistent API for reading and writing files. Now, if I want to read this data2.csv file with this different delimiter, how can I do that? For that, I first need to comment out this new file opening and writer object lines. Let's correct the indentation for our reader object and iteration of our reader object. This time, we want to read the data2.csv file. So let's change the name of the file here to data2.csv. Now this file has this symbol as the delimiter for the records. So I have to specify that when I'm creating the reader object. I can specify the delimiter argument and assign the delimiter for the file. And here I also need to uncomment this print row statement. If I run this code, you can see that it correctly prints the records even though the same character was used inside the data. Similarly, let's say if these double quotes were also used in the data, in that case we can also specify a different quote character. Here I have got this another file data underscore quote care dot csv file and it looks very similar to our data 2csv file but it has a different quote character. 
Let's first modify the file we want to read. To read this file properly, I have to specify the quote character while creating a reader object. If I don't specify that, it assumes the quote character as double quotes. And if I try to read this new file, you can see that it prints data incorrectly. It has split up the email addresses into two separate columns. So I can specify a quote care argument to specify caret symbol as the quote character for this file. And now if I run this file, you can see that it prints the data correctly. Similarly, for writing, we can specify the same keyword argument to use different quote character in our file. With this CSV module, there is also another way you can read and write files. That approach is little bit cleaner than this one. At least that's what I like about that approach. For reading files, we can use dict reader. For that, I simply have to replace this reader with dict reader. If I run this code, you can see that it prints all the lines in the form of a dictionary. It doesn't print the header line, but each row has key and value with header as the key. If I want to read only email address, I don't have to figure out the index for our email address column. I can simply use that key and it will print the result correctly. Let's go through the whole process of reading and writing CSV files one more time for a revision. Let me comment out all this code. First, we need to open file that we want to read. In this case, I opened data.csv file with file handle csv file. Then inside this with block, I also need to open the file for writing data with write mode and new line specified as the empty string. Here I have opened data2.csv file as new file. Now we need to create csv reader to read our csv file using dict reader. Similarly, I can use dict writer to create writer object for our new file. Now we need to iterate through each row in csv reader object. Each row returns a dictionary object with column name as the key. We can use the same csv writer dot write row method to write to our new file. In dict writer, there is one difference while writing a file. We also need to specify the field names we want to write and these field names should be present in the dict object it creates here. So here I have to create a list of columns as field names and add columns I want to write to my new file. I want to write first name, last name, email, and age columns. Now I have to pass this list as field names argument inside here. If I run this code, you can see that it creates all the data values in our new file. If I want to write only first name, last name, and email address, I can delete the age field from our dict object using del operator. If I run this code and check our new file, this time it doesn't have age column. It also didn't write the header row. Let me remove this del statement. We can also change the sequence of the columns while writing to a new file. For example, if I alter the sequence of these field names and write age before email in this list, because each row object is a dictionary, it can be used with different sequence. Let's also write the header line. For that, I simply need to call csvwriter.writeHeader method at the top before iterating through each line. 
If I run this code and take a look at the file, we now have the header line and also the age column is before the email address. So that's how we can work with CSV files. CSV files are quite common file format and this CSV module can be very useful for reading and writing those files. If you found this video useful, support me by subscribing and sharing this video. Also, if you have any questions regarding the material I covered in this video, please post it in the comment section below and I will get back to you soon. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next lesson.